This morning, I want you to go back in your, in your memory bank. And for some of you, it may be recent memory banks. Some of you might have to, uh, to really rewind a long way back, depending on how far back you might have to go. But I want you to go back in your memory bank to the best day of your life. You remember that day? You remember what was going on that day? You remember who was there that day? Now, you might have a lot of best days of your life, all right? And, and if, you've seen, if you've seen some Disney movies, if you've seen Rapunzel, you, you, know, you know Rapunzel talks about the best day ever. And uh, my, daughter, my daughters and my wife always say, you know, that today's the best day ever. And, you know, they said that, you know, the last week about some other day. And so every, every once in a while we have the best day ever. And I keep wondering, okay, how does that keep happening if it's the best day ever? But I want you to just pick out one day, not just the many best days you've had. I want you to rank your days and I want you to remember the very best day you've ever had. What was going on that day? Do you remember who was there? Do you remember what was going through your heart and going through your mind? There's a lot of best days we've had. When my children were born, that was a good day. That was a scary day. That was a good day. The day I got married, really good day. But if you're a Christian, there is not a day on your calendar better than the day that you were baptized. I want you to go back in your memory bank to that day, to the day that you were baptized. Some of you might have to go back into the last century to get to that day. Some of you might just have to go into the last few weeks or months to get to that day. But I want you this morning to go back to that day day. In Acts chapter 8, the passage that was just read to us about the Ethiopian eunuch, it, he didn't know it when he was riding back from Jerusalem going down to Ethiopia. He did not realize that when Philip came and met him, he did not know that was going to be the best day of his life. But he learned it. He learned about Jesus. And as soon as he learned about Jesus and what Jesus had done and what Jesus wanted him to do with his life, he saw some water and he said, look, here's some water. I'm not going to wait till I get home. I'm not going to wait until all that time passes. Look, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? It's the best day of his life. The Bible says he came up out of that water and he went on his way rejoicing. Because he knew his life had been changed. This morning I want you to go back to that day. And maybe today you're here and maybe you've never been baptized. I want you to think about, does today need to be that day? Does today need to be the best day of your life? There are some here this morning, no doubt, who are not ready to be baptized. Some here this morning who are not quite mature enough to understand all that's involved in being baptized. But no doubt in an audience of this size, there's somebody who's old enough and mature enough, and understands enough, recognize that what hinders me from being baptized is the question you need to answer today. But I want to share with you some things about the best day of your life. And these, you may have not put all of these things together in this way before, but I want you to think about what was it about that day that made it the best day of your life? Was it the fact that it was a day of confidence? When you think about the day that you were baptized, it truly was a day of confidence. You were absolutely certain on that day you had absolute faith on that day when you were baptized that God loves you. More than, more than any day before that, that day you were, God loves me. On that day that you were baptized, you realized more that day than ever before what Jesus had done for you. You were like those people in Acts chapter 2 who learned that they had crucified Jesus and it says they were cut to the heart. You were cut to the heart. You realize what Jesus had done for you. 
You realize that not only had he died, but just as Peter said in Acts 2, he had been raised from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And you realized on that day, and you had full confidence that there was a place called heaven that awaits you. Hebrews writer in Hebrews 3 and verse 14 calls that the beginning of your confidence. And that day you had that confidence. You had absolute assurance that on that day you knew that you were doing the right thing by being baptized. You knew that you were doing it at the right time. You were just like that Ethiopian. You didn't need to wait another day. You didn't even need to wait another hour. Look, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? It was the right time for that man. You knew it was the right time for you. And you knew you were doing it for the right reason. You weren't doing it in order to please somebody else. You weren't doing it in order to, to satisfy a, a relative. You, you, were, you knew you were doing it for the forgiveness of your sins. And so when that preacher, perhaps, or that man who baptized you asked you that question, do you believe with all of your heart that Jesus is the Son of God? There was no doubt in your mind. There was no hesitancy to say, yes, I do. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. It was a day of confidence. Do you remember that day? What a day. Do you remember that day and how much confidence you had that day? Can I ask you this morning? Do you still have that confidence? That confidence that you had that day, do you still have that confidence in how much God loves you and how much Jesus loves you and how much they want you to go to heaven? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you did the right thing at the right time for the right reason? Do you see, that day was a day of confidence. And because it was a day of confidence, it led to it being a day of conviction. This day of confidence, when you realize what God had done, when you realize what Jesus had done, all of a sudden it becomes a day of conviction because you learned about this thing that's called sin. That's that's not something the world likes to talk about. If you go out and talk to your friends at school or your friends at work about sin, you're going to be the least popular person around, right? I mean, we don't talk about sin. Who wants to hear about sin? But on that day, Perhaps you had heard about it before. But on that day that you were baptized, there was a conviction about sin that you had never had to that level, to that degree before. Because you came to understand the reality of sin. The reality of sin that the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 says. That sin is is a decision, is a choice that an individual makes. And it's in the choice that all accountable persons have made from the beginning of time. And the reality of sin began to sink in with you. That everybody has sinned. But your conviction of sin went deeper than that. It wasn't just a conviction of the reality of sin. There was the conviction of the seriousness of sin. The seriousness of sin, that it was so serious that God sent His only begotten Son into this world. And that Jesus went to the cross, and 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24 says, that in His body He bore all of our sins. Isaiah would say, the Lord has laid upon Him the iniquity of us all, Isaiah 53 and verse 6. You learned that day what Jesus had done for you. It's not just that he died. It's that when he died, the Lord took my sins and he took your sins and he laid them upon Jesus and he became at that moment our sin offering. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, Him who knew no sin, he made to be sin for us. And that convicted you. That hit you more than it ever had before. But you see, it wasn't just the reality of sin that hit you. It wasn't just the seriousness of sin that hit you. You were convicted by the consequences of those sins. You see, sins are are those things that individuals commit and they do and that sent Jesus to the cross. But what's the big deal about that? The big deal about my sins, Isaiah says in Isaiah 59 verse 2, is that my sins separate me from God. 
And separating me from my God means that I can live a life separated from God all of my years on this earth. And if I do nothing about it, I will be separated from God for all of eternity. In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. A spiritual separation. A reality that we face that when we commit those things that are a violation of the will of God... Not only does that jeopardize our life with Him now. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8 says that Jesus will return in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. And these, in verse 9, He says, These shall be separated. These shall be sent into a realm where they are eternally separated from God. Here He comes flaming fire. Here individuals who don't know God, who do not obey the gospel of Christ, and these shall be punished with an everlasting destruction away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. And perhaps that's what it was on that day. Conviction of the consequences of sin. But you see, these three points still don't get you to the fourth point that I want you to see. Because you could be convicted about the, the reality of sin. Yeah, everybody sins. You could be convicted about the seriousness. Of, yeah, Jesus went to the cross for everybody's sins. You could be convicted about the consequences of sin. Yeah, sin separates people from God. But still not be convicted of the personal nature of sin. Not just other people's sins. These are my sins sins. These are things that I have done that sent Jesus to the cross. The Lord has laid upon him David's sins. He died for me. And my sins will send me to an eternal hell. Matthew 25 and verse 46. If I don't do something about it, it was the best day of your life because that day of confidence led to a day of conviction. Do you remember that day? Do you remember the conviction that you had about sin the day that you were baptized? Do you still have it? Do you still have the conviction of your personal sin that you had on that day? You see, because it was a day of confidence, you absolutely knew what was going on, because that it led to a day of conviction about what sin, I've got to get rid of these sins how do I get rid of these sins? It led to a day of change. You realized you could not keep going down the path that you were going. Now, in the next point after change, we're going to talk about the change that God enacted within you. And so that's not this point, that's the next point. But this point is talking about the change that you chose to make. The change that the Bible uses the word repentance. The word repentance indicates, is not a word that we use very often. Go ahead and go use that word. And, that, and when you get in a conversation with your friends at school and, and, and at work and you use the word sin, go ahead and use that word repent too. That'll make you really popular now, using sin and repent all in the same conversation. Nobody wants to talk about repentance. But on that day, you did. Because on that day, you were determined, I've got to make some changes in my life. And we're not going to talk about these that I'm putting on the, uh, on, on the walls now, but I just want you to think, what was I changing about me? I decided I needed to change my mind. And this is because you had learned from the Bible that repentance is a change of mind that leads to a change of life. I've got to change my mind. I've got to change the way I, I think about things. I need to change my heart. You know, the, the, the Bible says, that, that my heart needs to be, needs to be right with God. And, and my prayer needs to be that the meditations of my heart to be right with God. My meditations haven't been right with God. So I need to change the way that my heart drives me. I need to change my life. 
on that day, you thought, I, I need to change my thoughts. I, I, some, I, sometimes I don't have the right kind of thoughts, and, and I definitely need to change my attitudes because sometimes my attitudes aren't right. And you say, sometimes I don't use the right words, and I, I need to change the way that I talk, and I need to change my actions and my habits, and you know, there might be some friends that I don't need to have anymore because on that day, you said, Jesus died for me. And because it was a day of conviction, for sin, you said, I need to make some changes so that I can get right with Jesus. And on the best day of your life, you said, I'm going to make those changes. You know, sometimes people think that and before they can get baptized, that they need to make all of those changes. That they need to fix everything in their life and make all of those changes first and then get baptized. That's not what repentance is. Repentance is not making all of those changes. Repentance is the decision to make those changes. And on that day, you said, I can't wait anymore. On the best day of your life, you decided to change. Do you remember that? You know, for some of you, it may not have been that long ago. For, for some of us, some decades have passed since that moment. Do you remember the changes that you were determined to make? Are you still there? Do you still have that determination to make those kind of changes that you need to make in your life to get right with God? It was a day of confidence that led to a day of conviction that led you to make it a day of change. And after you decided, I need to get my life right with God, and you turned your life away from sin and turned your life in the direction of God, it became a day of cleansing. The day that you were baptized was a day of cleansing. The Bible talks about sin, and it uses a variety of different metaphors, a variety of different descriptions to talk about sin. And, and, and in one place, it even talk, it uses the word filthy to talk about sin. And that's one way to think about our sin is that in the eyes of God, our sin makes us filthy. In the eyes of God, we are stained in the eyes of God. I want you to, I want you to picture in your mind, I want you to picture in your mind, I want you to walk into your kitchen. Can we go, can we go on a, a scavenger hunt for just a second? I want you to walk into your kitchen. Are you there? Are you in your kitchen? Turn the lights on so you can see, all right? You got the lights on? So you've walked into your kitchen, the lights are on. I want you to go to the cabinet in your kitchen where you keep your Tupperware, all right? And maybe not the Tupperware, where you put your leftover stuff in. Are you in that cabinet? Walk over. Is that the most organized cabinet in your kitchen? Not for us. We can't keep the Tupperware cabinet. I don't know what the deal is. We just can't keep the Tupperware cabinet organized. But anyway, are you there? Have you opened the cabinet where your Tupperware is? Can you see it? You've got the big, you got the big sizes, you got the medium size, you got the little sizes of stuff you're never going to eat, but you, th you can't throw it away, so you're going to put it in a little Tupperware, put it in the fridge, and then after it goes bad, you'll throw it away, but you, you, know, you weren't going to throw it away at first. Are you looking at all of your Tupperware? Can you see it? Can you see the Tupperware that you stored the spaghetti in? Oh, you know which one I'm talking about, right? You know exactly. You, you just looked at it. The, well, how do you know which one you stored the spaghetti in? Because you can't get it clean. At least I can't. I, maybe there's some magic cure, but I can tell you which one we stored. We stored in the same one every time so we don't mess up all of our Tupperware. You know which. Why do you know? Because you pull it out and it's clean, right? It went through the dishwasher, right? It's clean then why do you still see all of the stains? Because it's not perfectly clean. On the day that you were baptized and Jesus cleansed you from the stain of your sin, does His cleansing look like your Tupperware bowl? Did, I mean, did He clean you up mostly, but still leave a little residue left for you to remember what was there? Before? No, He didn't. When Jesus cleansed you from your sin, he perfectly and completely cleansed you from all of the stain of your sin. So think about some of the words that the Bible uses. Arise and be baptized in 
wash away your sins. When the blood of Jesus cleanses your sins and washes them away, there's no residue left. It's clean. It's cleansed. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11, he says, Such were some of you. You used to be sinners. Such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were set apart and made completely different than you used to be. Do you remember that day? Do you remember the day when you were washed and you were cleansed? Through obedience to the truth, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, by obedience you purified your soul. Doesn't that just sound wonderful? That your soul was purified in obeying the truth. Remember when that happened? Do you remember when you went down into that water? You went down into that water, maybe you stood there for a moment, and as you stood there, every single one of your sins was still against you in the eyes of God, but then you were lowered in that water. Nothing special about the water. You were brought up out of that water just like that Ethiopian was, and at that very moment, you were as clean as a newborn baby in the eyes of God. You, were as clean. You, you, you didn't have that stain like that Tupperware bowl. There were no sin and no sin residue left in your soul. God cleansed you. He washed you. Purified you. He blotted out every sin. Every filthy sin you ever had. What a day. That's why it's the best day of your life. Nothing better than that can ever happen in your life. Do you remember it? Do you remember it? It was a day of cleansing. You weren't cleansed from your sin before that moment. The Bible does not teach that somebody is saved and then after they're saved, they need to be baptized. The Bible never puts it in that order. It always indicates that when somebody makes that change of heart that leads to a change of life and at the moment they're baptized and they're raised from that watery grave of baptism, they're cleansed from the filthiness of their sin. That's the best day of your life. Do you remember it? Are you still there? Are you still as clean in the eyes of Jesus as you were on that day? You might say, well, no, not really. You know, I've sinned. I even sinned later on that same day after I was baptized. I wish I wouldn't have, but the devil just tempted me and and I sinned. And and then then the next day I sinned and I I, I just, I keep doing it. I'm not as clean as I used to be. Let me suggest that you read 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. The Bible says to Christians in 1 John 1 and verse 7, if conditional statement if we've got to meet that condition if we walk in the light as he is in the light Jesus Christ is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son when you were baptized remember I said there's nothing special about the water when you were raised out of that watery grave of baptism what was it that cleansed you wasn't the water not for the removal of the filth of the flesh first Peter 3 and verse 21 What cleansed you was the blood of Jesus, Romans Revelation 1 and verse 5 says. The blood of Jesus cleansed you from your sin when you were baptized. 1 John 1 and verse 7 says, As a Christian, if we continue to walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, what does it do? Keeps on cleansing us. That blood that keeps on cleansing us is the same blood that cleansed us when we were washed from our sins in the watery grave of baptism. This blood that keeps on cleansing us is just as potent as that blood that cleansed us to begin with. It's not that your soul now looks like that spaghetti Tupperware because you keep sinning and you keep putting spaghetti in the same Tupperware and it keeps getting dirty again. When Jesus cleansed you as a child of God, you are just as clean as you were when you came up out of the water and gave a baptism. Do you remember that day? Oh, what a day it was. And because it was that day, because it was the best day of your life, because it was a day of cleansing, it was a day of cheerfulness. You couldn't help but be cheerful. You're just like the Ethiopian eunuch. He was saved from his sins and he went on his way rejoicing. It's the same thing that the Bible says in Acts 16, the Philippian jailer did. He rejoiced with all of his house in verse 34 of Acts 16. You were saved from your sins. It's a reason to rejoice. You were freed from your sins. 
That's a reason to rejoice. I've never been. I've never been in prison. Well, I, I've been in a prison. I just haven't been on that side. I've been there to visit. I've been there to minister. But I've never been a prisoner. But I can imagine the day you walk out of that prison and you're no longer behind those bars is a day of cheerfulness. What happened on that day when you were freed from the shackles of sin? It was a day of cheerfulness. A day for you to rejoice. It was the day that you were adopted into the family of God. It was the day that you were accepted. Accepted. We live in a world where people want to be accepted. The day that you were baptized is the day you were accepted by God. Whoever, whoever, and, and Peter says in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and verse 35, whoever fears God and works righteousness is accepted by Him. That day you were accepted. The day that you were baptized is the day that you were enrolled in heaven. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23 says, We've come to the church of the living God who's enrolled in heaven, who's registered in heaven. God took out his pen, as it were, and enrolled you into heaven. That's a day of cheerfulness for you. It was the day when God enrolled you in heaven and you secured your place there. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. The Bible says, I'm writing these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. I'm writing these things to you who are faithful Christians. Back up to chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm writing these things to you who are walking in the light as He is in the light. I'm writing these things to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. That's not unconditional security. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand. Don't let religious world lead you down the wrong path. But do Christians have security? You can know that you have eternal life because your name has been registered in heaven and you're striving to live the best faithful Christian life that you can. That was a day of cheerfulness. Do you remember it? Do you remember how happy you were? I, I've, I've had people come up out of the waters of baptism when I baptize them with just the biggest smile on their face. I've had them come up and they, they've thrown their hands and they're, yes, thank you, Lord, they've said. I've had people come up out of the waters of baptism and tears are filling their eyes. Just tears of overwhelmed joy at what has just transpired. I've watched them walk out of the building and there's just almost a bounce in their step. They're like, this is the best day of my life. Are you still there? Do you still have that joy? Do you still have that cheerfulness that you had on that day? For you see, it was a day when you got exactly what you needed. Sometimes that's all people think baptism is. So that I can get the forgiveness of my sins. But that's not all that that day is. The day I'm baptized is a day of commitment. It's not just so that I come here and I get to the waters and I get what God is giving me and now I can go back to what I was doing before. No, it is a day where I get what God is giving me, the salvation of my sins, and I am committing to my God to the best of my ability. And we're not going to develop all of these, but I just want you to think about some of the things that you made a commitment to that day. To the best of my ability, Lord, I'm going to serve you. To the best of my ability, Lord, I'm going to love you with all of my heart. To the best of my ability, Lord, I am going to help my brethren and do good unto all men, especially those of the household of faith. To the best of my ability, Lord, I'm going to come together and I'm going to worship you. Not just coming into a building and sitting in a pew, but when I get there, my heart is going to be poured out in praise to you for who you are and what you have done. Lord, I'm not going to fall for everything. I'm going to listen to people. I'm going to even listen to what this preacher says. I'm not going to believe everything this preacher says. I'm going to check and make sure what he says is true. Lord, I'm going to test all things. I'm going to hold fast to what's good, and I'm going to abstain from every form of evil. Lord, now that I've learned what I need to do to become a Christian, I want to help other people to learn what they need to do to become a Christian so that they can have the best day of their lives. On that day, you made a commitment. Now, you may not have realized on that day just how big of a commitment it was, but on that day you made a commitment. Do you remember it? Do you remember how determined you felt going home that day? 
I, I, I remember being determined. I'm not, I'm not going to ever sin again in my life. And by being filled up with pride at that moment, maybe I sinned already. You know, you think, I'm, you know, but you were just determined. I'm going to do the best I can for God. Are you still there? Do you still have that determination? Do you still have that level of commitment that you had on the best day ever? The last thought I want to share with you. And as I was putting this together a few years ago, you know, I thought about what this day is. A day of confidence and conviction and change. It's a day of, of cleansing. And because of that cleansing, it's a day of cheerfulness and commitment. But I also thought, you know, it's, it's also a day of calm. It's a day when, you know, all of these things have been happening in my life. And, and, and maybe things have not been what they needed to be in my life. But all of a sudden, I have done what I needed to do to get my life right with God. And when you come up out of the waters of baptism, there is a calmness of soul. First, first Corinthians 6 verse 11 says that you were, you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified. That's what the word justified means. You were made right with God. You were baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, verse 19. You were baptized into a whole new relationship with God. And at that moment, you were right with God. And there was a peace that came over you that said, finally, this is what I've needed. And so some of these same points that we've already talked about, but there was a calmness because you had been pardoned. You had been pardoned from the guilt of sin. There was a calmness because you had been freed from the bondage of sin. There was a calmness, and I like this third one, because you had been reconciled from the separation of sin. Paul said to those Gentiles in Ephesians chapter 2, you were away from God. You were far off from God. You were brought near by the blood of Jesus. And on that day, you had a calmness of soul. It was the best day of your life. Do you remember it? Are you still there? Do you still have that same calm? Do you still have that same peace that you had on that day? The day that you were baptized. As you look back on over all the days that you've had in your life, the day that you were baptized is truly the best day you've ever had. And so as we think about this and as we close this lesson this morning, I want you to remember that day. Carry that day with you. I want you to rejoice in that day. To remember and to rejoice about the confidence that you had, the conviction you had, the determination you had to change, the, the, the cheerfulness you had because you had been cleansed and the commitment that you made and the calmness that you brought to your soul. Remember that. Rejoice in that. And as you go throughout your days, recommit. Recommit to what you had that day. If you are not, I've asked you after each one of these points this morning, are you still there? If you're not, if you're not still there in that confidence and conviction and change and, cl and, and cleansing and cheerfulness and commitment and calm, if you're not still there, may I plead with you to return? May I plead with you to reform, to revamp whatever there is in your life that has caused you to stray from what you had on that best day of your life. Rearrange your priorities and get back to what you had that day. And my, may I plead with you to make up your mind, to be determined right now that you will refuse to ever stray from God. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 9, there's a statement made about some people, and I, just, I know the Bible says it, but I just can't believe that people could ever get to that point. It says about these people in 2 Peter, 2 and, or 2 Peter 1 and verse 9, that they have forgotten that they were cleansed from their sins by the blood of Jesus. And I know it happens, but I just wonder how could anybody ever forget that they were cleansed by the blood of Jesus? They forgot. 
that that was the best day of their life. Have you ever been baptized? You ever been baptized? I'm not asking you, have you ever had water put on you? And I'm not even asking you, have you ever gone down in water and come up out of the water? Have you ever been baptized in the way that the Bible, in the way that we've talked about this morning, being baptized? If you've never been baptized in the way that the Bible says to be baptized, if you've never been baptized in the way that we read about in the pages of the New Testament, why not do it today? That Ethiopian said, look, here's water. What hinders me? I want to do it right now. I don't want to wait. I don't want to go home and, and wait and gather people around and, and wait until you know, a good day. I want to do it right. Why? Because he knew what he needed to do. He knew the reason he needed to do it, and he knew he needed to do it right now. That's why Ananias said to Saul, why are you waiting? If you've never been baptized, why tarryest thou? Have you ever been baptized with the baptism we read about in the Bible that it was preceded by confidence and conviction and a determination to change? Have you ever been baptized with that baptism? Have you ever been baptized with the purpose of being cleansed at that moment from your sins? Not Baptized believing you had already been saved at some point prior because you believed and accepted Jesus and now you're being baptized. That's not the order the Bible puts it in. Jesus says, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Have you ever been baptized so that at that moment you could be cleansed from your sins? That was the purpose of it. If not, why don't you be baptized today for that purpose that we read about in the Bible? Have you ever been baptized with the, at, at, at a moment that it was accompanied by a commitment, that you were raised with a determination, a commitment, I'm going to serve the Lord. Have you ever been baptized with the baptism we read about in the Bible that results in cheerfulness and calm? If you've never been baptized, the way that the Bible describes and the way the Bible teaches, the way the New Testament says for one to be baptized and the way the New Testament says in order for one to be saved, then you need to get your life right with the Lord. You need to make today the best day of your life. God is calling you. That's what the song says. He's pleading with you. Make today the best day. Be baptized today. If you've already been baptized at some point in your life, and you've done it the way the Bible says to do it, but you haven't been living that life that He calls us to live, you're not still where you were then. If you need to get your life right with Him, do it right now, as together we stand and sing. God is calling us.